Hello and welcome to the second part of our self-illumination versus corona light tutorial. So in this part we are going to take all of the theory that we've talked about in the part one and we will put it into practice. So the scene I have here is kind of a terrain with some sort of alien forest and if I enable Corona Interactive I can show you how it looks. So we are scattering some kind of alien grass and some all sorts of alien trees and plants around uh, the terrain and we have also a cave. So as we talked about in the previous, what we talked about in the previous part was that we need to decide what kind of lights in our scene will be the key light sources. So in this scene, I want to have sunlight, which is, which will actually in this kind of scene acts like some moonlight uh, illuminating the plants. And I also want some blue glow coming out of the cave. So let's do that now and let's go to Corona lights and create Corona sun. Just give it a second. There we go. Since this is going to be sort of a moonlight, I want lighting to be kind of this bluish tone. Uh, I have already settings that have stuck from my previous experimentation, which is size 2 to be slightly larger disk and intensity 0.01. And now you can see I have some illumination on my scene. I'm going to isolate the sun, move the target to the center, enable my background visibility, and I'm going to try to somewhat align the direction of the light source with the glow that's coming from the environment map. And go back here. Let me just quickly turn off bloom and glare as it doesn't mesh well with the with the interact render. Okay. I'm going to set this to camera, lock this, and now I can work in this viewport while seeing my camera here. So I'm just gonna play around with the with the sun a little bit to find some nice angle that I like. Okay, maybe just slightly more here. So I see a bit of a translucency on this alien plant right here. Okay, so this is nice. This would be the first key light source. The second one would be kernel light. Again, uh, my settings have stuck from the previous experimentation. So I'm using high intensity and I'm using this deep blue color. And let's just create this light here. Okay, this may be a bit too big, so let's make it like half a meter. And let's take it and let's dig it deep inside of the cave so the light is coming from, <clears throat> from inside the depth of the cave. Like this. So okay, uh, at this point you do not see anything special. This is how you would light the scene. But let's say this forest is kind of uh, bioluminescent, bioluminescent at night, uh, that the plants are glowing at night. And here's where the problem would appear. So uh, generally, uh, if you are, if you were to uh, try to light it with corona light that obviously wouldn't work because we want our plants to be glowing so you need something that will define a mesh as a light source 
Now, if we, we use Corona, Corona light material, then the issue there is that uh, one thing that I didn't mention previously is that the light sources, explicitly sampled light sources like Corona light and Corona light material cannot be instanced. So if we have, let's say, one million polygon tree, if we regularly instance it 10 times, we have still just one million of polygons in our memory because it's instanced. But as soon as you apply Corona light material to it, the instancing will stop working and each tree will be unique. Therefore, it will take 11 millions of polygons in our memory. So if we were to make all of this, all of this uh, forest glowing using Corona light material, uh, the best case scenario, it would be extremely slow, but the most likely scenario that it would crash completely. But as I said, the self-illumination in Corona material has no such overhead and uh, it does nothing different than just uh, regular material. Therefore, we can have as much of stuff glowing in our scene as we want, uh, as long as we use just self-illumination and it will still illuminate any objects that will be close by. So I've already prepared something and first thing is uh, there is this, there are these alien plants right here that have these glowing tips in the night. So I enable self illumination here and they light up easily. There is some alien tree, this, this one on the right side. Uh, it, has, it has glowing trunk, so I again can turn this on and we can see the slight blue glow here. There, there are these kind of twisty trees as well and they have like glowing branches. Turn that on as well and we can immediately see the glow starts showing up and it doesn't slow our scene down in any way. And there are these veins under the grass that kind of some roots from the grass that glow too. So I just turn this on as well. And our entire bioluminescent forest just lights up and we get almost no performance hit. So if I unlock the viewport, we can see that everything is glowing. There are those veins on the ground, the trees, the trees are glowing, the branches are glowing, everything is glowing, yet the scene still renders reasonably quickly. And if I were to create a new teapot, let's say, in our scene, and drag it somewhere around here, maybe give it a new kernel material. We can still see there's kind of some illumination like the green light over here or if I maybe make it smaller, it will be more obvious. Yes, here you can see, for example, the orange plant is glowing on the teapot. So the self-illumination is not really a fake effect. Yes, there is a little bit of clamping going on due to the max sample intensity, but as soon as uh, the self-illumination doesn't have any kind of strong illumination, the clamping will be complete minimal because the illumination intensity won't be much different than average of the rest of the rays incoming at that sampled point. So if you, ha if you had, let's say, character walking through this bioluminescent forest, uh, walking in this grass, then the plants would illuminate his legs and the veins would illuminate his legs and everything would work as I as you expect. So it, it may look a bit slow in the preview because there's a lot of instancing and opacity mapping going on. So if I just start rendering the scene, 
you can see we have still reasonable performance on my six core uh, i7 5930k i'm still getting over 1 million race per second and i've actually already left this trender and it took just 15 minutes to get this result i've played a little bit more with the post processing but generally this is straight out of corona frame buffer after 15 minutes you can see i've managed to get clean frame of heavily instanced geometry that's glowing everywhere in the scene so this is this is how you should utilize the self-illumination when there's a lot of something in the scene that's not key, key lighting source in your scene you should always use self-illumination if there are some key lights that are not uh, that, that are not many in your scene there's there's just low quantity of them then you should use either corona, corona light or corona light material so i hope you found this tutorial useful and i'll see you next time goodbye